Okay, yes, I have been crying. <laughs> but I will not cry on camera. I'm just really upset because... I suffer from anxiety, I suffer from depression, I suffer from fibromyalgia, um, I have bone on bone knees, I have damage in my, some disc in my back and um, so it's like nerve damage, it kind of feels like it's on my butt like sciatica but it's not sciatica. You know, and I have, like, swelling, which is kind of like lymphedema, but, I mean, my feet and stuff don't get huge, like, those women who have lymphedema, but I get, like, swelling, and so, like, sometimes my hands are so swollen, I mean, not so much this hand, more so, I did some dishes tonight, and right now my hands feel like they've been crushed, and... You know, sometimes I get mad because I think, you know, why am I having to go through this? Why do? It, why is it so hard to do dishes? You know, and I avoid doing laundry. I mean, I was going to do laundry today. I was going to finish the dishes because I have a stack, you know, pots and pans that I've just ignored. And because it hurt. Even taking medication, like hydrocodone, doesn't take it away. I take prescription Advil, you know, like the highest dose. And it doesn't, you know, yes, without it, I'm like, you'd have to put hospitalize me. I'm, you know, unable to move. But, you know... I always had trouble, like I always thought it was arthritis because I remember going down for my friend Robin Boatwright's first wedding and going south for me is like uh, being beaten up. Like even going down to Lexington, Kentucky <clears throat> for Thanksgiving one year and visited my sister and her daughters and stuff. I was in so much pain and agony. I mean, I cried out in the night. I mean, it was that bad. And at that time, I had Percocets, which, you know, would seem like that, you know, people love Percocet. You know, everybody wants it. But I was still, and my anxiety, I even had Xanax then because... That was when they'd still prescribe them together, but now they don't. But, um, and I was, believe it or not, much heavier. I was like 150 pounds more than I am now. And I'm not a tiny girl. I mean, I am, but not, you know, like thick, as they say. But anyway, um, but I just get so frustrated because I think, you know, I'm going to see Sarah tomorrow. And I look forward to it. I can't wait to see her and I can't, you know, I'm excited. But I also get such high anxiety about it because I know she wants to come home and she's going to talk about it. You know, I wish I was home. I wish I could come home. And, uh, you know, she's got to do more on her end to make that happen and I don't think she understands she doesn't understand that she has to get stronger because there's no way I could lift her like one day of taking care of her physically I would be in bed probably for two you know if I do laundry and you know dishes and pick up around the house the next day I can't move out of bed you know it's fucking pitiful and there's no one to help me. It's just me. And, you know, I've always had this experience in my life. It's always been just me, pretty much, when it came down to it. But Sarah would come through, too, sometimes. And, you know, like, she would always dust and vacuum. And then I had to clean the kitchen and the bathroom 
and um, everything else. But, you know, it was nice to have that. But usually I was able to, I, I had energy. I would, when I was working at the group home and I, I worked one thirty to 9.30 or 1 to 9, I would clean the whole house before I'd come to work. How did I do it? I mean, of course I was in my 20s. But, uh, you know, I miss that Amy that just did it and then got, took a shower. I would work out too and take a shower, get ready and be at work on time. I'm not that girl anymore. It's so frustrating. I get so upset and angry that this is my situation. And, you know, I don't feel like, I mean, Sarah, her brain cells have to regroup. You know, that's, she had brain damage. She had, you know, two strokes. But, you know, right now she's kind of like a young girl. I mean, she is mature. She understands a lot, but she sometimes acts like a young girl, especially with me. And like I'm her mama, you know, she kind of acts like that. And I'm, you know, and I got tired of telling her all the time, you know, I'm your twin sister, you're a grown woman, because it's just not, you know, for some reason, I don't know. So I don't even do that much. I still, I'm horrible at repeating, but, um, you know, I need to stop it because it's making me miserable and making me have major anxiety about our visit tomorrow. Like, I don't want to talk to her, you know? I mean, I talk to her every day, but, you know, it's just like, I feel guilty that she's in the situation that she's in. And uh, I sometimes feel like it's my fault. I remember right after she had, you know, that last stroke that was really bad and like, when she'd had the first one, I was telling everybody, well, we're going to eat right, you know, and all this. But we didn't really have money. We would have like $40 a month for groceries. And so what do you buy? You buy um, pasta. I would sometimes make like tuna fish casserole. But, I mean, and we'd have to make that last. And um, junk food, basically, because it was cheap. And Sarah would always convince me, let's just buy what we want. Forget the bills, you know. She was always very like that, you know, like, oh, skip this bill to pay this one. And then tomorrow I'll look at it, you know. Whereas I was always very conscientious and strict about it. God, I'm making myself out to a saint. And that's not true. Because I would agree with her. Okay, let's eat like a pig. And I remember my sister said to me, you know, I'm, what I, I had said, like, well, we're going to start eating right. And she goes, that's what you said the last time. And I was like, you're right. I did say that the last time. And I think people, a lot of people have dumped the responsibility of what happened to Sarah on me. Because I've always been one to try to be more healthy you know, exercise, yeah, writing on my wall. It's going to be painted, but anyway. Um, it's just a lot of stress, and I feel like I started on August 1st, and I've accomplished nothing. You know, I don't feel, like, even with the smoking, I don't feel happy about it, you know, because I'm miserable. Every day I'm miserable, you know, even though I know it's gross and a horrible habit, it's like I really miss it. And I really wish I could have a cigarette right now. I mean, like, I really feel like going and getting some. But it won't solve it. It won't help the situation at all. And, you know, this is a really hard thing I'm doing. You know, I was going to color my hair today. I got nothing done that I wanted to get done. You know, I just barely touched the surface. 
and that seems to be all I ever do is just barely touch the surface. And I didn't get my bills paid like I wanted to do. I just totally, all of a sudden it's midnight. I'm like, what the fuck? I didn't get shit done. You know, I just, you know, I get mad at the doggies and all I seem to do every day is I take my medicine, I take care of the dogs, I watch TV, I read, feed the dogs, take them out a hundred million times a day, clean up their piss and shit, and um, lay in bed and try to pass out. That's basically what I get accomplished. So I don't know what I'm doing, you know, and I don't know if I'm going to make it because it just seems like I try, I get all fired up and then I'm like, oh, fuck it, you know? So I don't know. I feel like I'm guilty of not being a good sister. I was not a good daughter. Um, mom and I used to fight, 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 fight. And basically when I, you know, was told pretty much that it's my fault because I fought with mom so much over a horrible situation that that's why she got dementia is because she just couldn't take it. She wanted to forget. And I felt like I was standing up for myself, but maybe it was too late to do that. But maybe I'm, you know, just selfish. Selfish to have these thoughts. <sighs> I mean, I love Sarah, but I don't know if I love everything that's happening. In fact, I know I don't. I don't know how, why I can't just accept her as she is and where she's at and love her. Why do I feel the need to always push her? And she's not there yet. And it's really difficult. And I don't feel like people really get it. And nobody really cares. You know, nobody cares. I mean, the nursing home said, well, she could go into assisted living. Assisted living. Sarah was thinking like an apartment. You know, it's not like that. It's just a nursing, another nursing home called assisted living. Because you still, you have a room, basically. And you, you don't even have a kitchen. You just have a little fridge. And you share, still share a bathroom. And you still have nurses and CNAs in and out taking care of you like they do now. And you still go to the dining room to eat. So assisted living is just like a middle middle management that's not necessary. And, you know, I told her, you know, just can't you be patient? Give your brain time. You know, your brain just needs to, your noggin needs to get fixed. And it's going to take time, but it will happen. But you have to believe it. And it's like... Like I've said a million times before, it's always been so hard to convince Sarah, you know, you're, it's going to be okay. You know, it's like, I can't do it anymore. I can't. I'm so, I can't even cheer myself on. You know, I'm just, I'm not going to cry because I hate it when people cry on videos. I mean, I don't hate it, but I always think, God. You know, I just, I don't, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. You know, I'm just tired. I'm so tired of trying to be positive. You know, even for my dogs, it's like if they look at me, I have to smile. <laughs> yeah. Because if you don't, then they're all worried. What? Is everything okay? You know, same with Sarah. I just feel like I'm like, hi, okay, what? Okay, great. Okay, bye. You know, there's no discussions. It's always just I want to come home. 
which breaks my heart because of course she does. I would want to come home. You know, I always say part of me wishes it had happened to me. Knock on wood. Because I'm used to fighting on my own, you know? And I don't mean that like I'm amazing because I'm not, obviously, I'm not. Um, you know, I used to have to fight through to study. I used to have to fight, you know, to follow all the rules Sarah had all the time in our life. And, you know, just, it was so hard, you know, and I guess I'm just, she's been out of my, you know, constant everyday life for a while now, since 2016. And I feel like, um, I don't know what I feel like. I mean, it's like you get used to being alone, you know, and then I don't want a baby. I never did. I never wanted children. You know, I hate it. I mean, I didn't hate it, but working in the group home was physically and emotionally fucked up. It was hard work. And social work is hard. Because the, even the people who work in social work aren't nice. And, you know, because everybody's crazy. And, you know, physically it was devastating. That's why my knees are bone on bone from working in the group home. You know, lifting people and being kicked in the knee and you know, you get that happens enough and you're fucked. So I don't want that again. I don't want my life to be, you know, piss, shit and puke. I mean, no offense about people who are living group homes. But, I mean, that's what you're dealing with, and even worse sometimes. So, and that's what it would be with Sarah. I mean, that's why I feel like I just need a million dollars. Then I could pay someone to take care of her and then have fun with her and just be sisters, you know, and do fun things, you know, because that's really the only thing that I have right now. That's it. You know, I've gained so much weight over this pandemic. <laughs> I was like really getting slim and then pandemic, I'm like gorge. That's no excuse because I've always been a recluse. So it didn't change. I. It's not like I suddenly didn't go out. You know, I, I never went out. So that's just a bad excuse to blame a pandemic. It's already doing enough damage. <laughs> But, uh, please, I, I notice a lot of people view my videos, but please subscribe, please like, or dislike, however you feel, and make comments. You know, I feel like I want, I'm reaching out for a reason, you know, I kind of would like to hear from people, you know, even if it's just to say, hi, I think you're stupid, you know, I would appreciate that anything but you know you can't make people do what they don't want to do anyway so I just was rambling but we are really I have to remember and I want all of you to remember that we're all connected and so I love you all because if I love you I must love me all right I'm going to go to bed. I have to be up at 5.30 a few hours. So I'll probably just read. But anyway, I love you all. Thank you.